All right, welcome to Packers on my block, Packers podcast. AG, turn off the mute, baby. I'm your host, Mike Wall. With me, yes. as always, my technologically advanced all-time leading running back for the Green Bay I Packers. I forget every Online time. Green. I forget Online. every time that thing. I'm almost playing a game with you now to see if you'll do it. <laughs> I, I forget to look down and see my <laughs> mic has the, the little uh, slash between it. Oh, man. So, hey, man, yeah, stop, I'm doing stop, good, man. I'm doing good. Age, stop showing your age. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's not like my paying dad, attention. My dad's like, my dad said something to me over the weekend, something about his like phone not working, and I realized that my my parents. So my parents are seventy six. Okay? Yeah, yeah. My parents, if if my dad texts you, it could be my mom or my dad. They have two. Oh, they're not connected. They have two phone lines, but as far as like iMessage or whatever goes, yeah, yeah. or FaceTime or any. It all goes through one system. So oh you, you, yeah, iMessage does that. Yeah, you be. I'll be. I'll be shooting some some probably inappropriate, funny stuff to my my pops, <laughs> and all of a sudden my mom's over there like, I don't get it. Like I don't get the joke. I'm like, what are we like? What are we doing, guys? I mean, oh, it's, it's 2023 feet people. Yeah, you gotta you gotta know the inside joke. Uh, just like uh, I'm gonna do this read real quick. Like, but our, our people are our support sponsors here at Bet Online. Dot AG is the number one source for all our basketball information. Basketball has been, I say, revving up. The playoffs are looking good, looking interesting. And so with the stats, news, and scores, you get all that. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports from for this year's basketball uh, pro basketball playoffs. BetOnline is your sports information headquarters this season as we have covered all of the wagering needs. Basketball, MLB, NHL, hockey, right now all in the playoffs and a lot of USC fights coming down the line all summer long and boxing as well. So Better Line is the fastest and the easy way to get your betting information, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games also you can play right from your right from your home. So get out there, let's go head to the website today for your mobile on your mobile device. Get on um, the website. Be sure to use the promo code BLEAV to receive your 50% welcome bonus for your first deposit. So, Mike, bet online where the game starts. Yes, sir. I I have to be honest with you. I don't I I seem like I have the kind of personality in my mind that I'd be a huge sports better. And I don't do it. And I just every time I every game I watch. Okay, yeah. I'm knowing you long game, enough. That makes every, sense. Every game yeah. that I watch that I don't bet on, like a little, I think a little piece of me dies. Because you're like, I, oh, I could have won that. Well, yeah, especially like the playoffs this year. I, the and, NBA so is the, crazy. Here's the prop bet that I want to know about. Did you watch the Lakers Nuggets last game? Yes, I watched okay. it. So the prop bet that we have to talk about is what is the over and under for Lakers free throw differentiator? From the Nuggets because the NBA is trying to throw the every game, and the game three was one of the most egregious, like poorly officiated games I have watched. Yeah, it and was it some, didn't, oh. and it, the uh, the Nuggets were just that much better. They just weren't missing shots. Right, they're throwing. I mean, LeBron James could literally do a pirouette at half court, and if he misses the shot, they'll call. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> well, you so see his like, pop that he did the other day. What's that? Did you see the flop he did? Oh, for a guy who I mean, you know what I you know what you gotta really respect about about what? he tried. He, it was he was trying to sell it. He well, but he comes out every year and he talks about what a tough guy he is and how he, he right. doesn't flop because he's just not that guy. Exactly. He's, like, he's one of the most egregious floppers I think I've ever seen. Like, and what he does now is I mean, listen, he's the best player on the planet. I mean, it, yes. you know, he, Michael Jordan's my best of all time. Yeah, mine James, too. Mine LeBron too. LeBron James is the best athlete I think I've ever seen walk this earth as far as everything the man could do. I mean, he's six foot eight, 265 pounds, built like a brick shit house. probably yeah. runs a four or five, you know, 40 inch vertical. You're just going, what? No more. Yeah. There, right? Yeah. So, I mean, he looked like when he's he standing next, when he was standing next to Andrew Wiggins in the Warriors uh, uh, matchup, Andrew yeah. Wiggins is not a small dude. No. LeBron James' shoulders, like if, if he was on my camera right now, his shoulders would be on both sides of the, the cut screen you know he's yeah. enormous but it's but impressive. he chases the, he fouls everybody and then he chases the ref with his hands up like this oh you know like every time like like what are we doing like bro you can get a foul it's okay like he's never fouls out of games or really. the whole thing is anyway i wonder what the over under for the discrepancy in free throw like i think the lakers are going to be like if i was a betting person i would bet yeah. that the lakers take 13 
at 13 and a half, the over under be 13 and a half free throws. More, more than the Nuggets take. So whatever, or so yeah. whatever the Nuggets, if the Nuggets take mm-hmm. two, they get fi- they, they're going to take 15 and a half, 16. Yeah. What do you think? I, I agree. I agree with that because I'm looking at the stats here. They had 20 t- 29 attempts at the free throw line mm-hmm. compared to 19. So I think almost, it's going to be worse. I think it's going to be worse. Yeah. And yeah, like you to your point, I was watching that. I watched that one flop where he's, I think he's defending Jokic. And Jokic just does a simple move, and LeBron creates his own momentum to yeah. push himself off yeah. and slides it to the first row of people on on on, on, on the, no, or the sideline seat. So it's just like, come on, man. You you didn't have no leverage, yeah. but you created it somehow, the momentum. And then, like you said, that comment, too. I knew that. I knew I was like a comment. I was like, come on. You, you make this stuff. You say this stuff, but then you do this. There was Hold a, yourself accountable. Let's go. There was a joke last year that like the NFL was scripted, right? I I, don't, I can't remember how it started or whatever. Yeah, it was um, what's his name? It was uh, what's the running back after me at Houston? Arian, uh, Foster. Arian Foster. Arian Foster brought it up. Yeah, he was in Miami for a minute. He's he's yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so yeah, I will say this though, like when I watch the NBA sometimes, just, and not like with specific teams, because obviously it pays the NBA. It pays the NBA to have a longer series. It pays mm-hmm. the NBA for the Lakers to be in. It pays the NBA yes. for LeBron James to be in. Like, more tickets, more than the so Denver all Nuggets. That. Like, there's no yep. Denver Nuggets market. Like, I don't. Not know, right now. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, so like, I it's like we get it, but it's so it almost seems like there's a I picture this like dark cigar room and like in the back office where like all these guys are like smoking stogies and like drinking scotch and talking about how they're, like who's gonna throw the next game. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's that so it, that room exists it's somewhere so in this world. Yeah, it yeah. really it's got to. It has to. hundred yeah. percent. I could I could picture that for sure. AJ Dillon was in the news. The running back coach was talking this week and and yeah. you know, about increasing production. All these guys need to you know pull their weight a little bit more because of Jordan Love. And we've talked about this for the last two seasons. How yep. AJ seems to get better as the season goes along, kind of find his footing, run behind his pads a little bit more. And they, the the running back coach was saying, listen, you know, he started a little bit slower than we would like. He's trying to figure some things out during the t- yeah. towards the end of the season. He got better. I'm not quoting, but that's essentially the gist of it. Yeah, you're um, all right. W- what I wanted to talk about, Ag, is is just from a running back because we could talk about this from every position. But yeah. when you're starting, let's just say from the off season until now, is it a did you just approach you? You probably always had the same mindset. Does anything change? Is there a time during the offseason transition where you're like, oh, it's go time? It, did you did you think I, I got to get faster this year? Maybe I got to put some more shoulder strength on. What are, what are the things that you can do to help yourself feel like you're ready to start faster? Um, I just uh, I say early in my career when I was younger, that's where I, I, I kept my brain in terms of my body, in terms of keeping staying, keeping my speed where it was because I was still young. You know, I started got drafted when I was 21. So I knew that between um, na- normal time and everything else happening, that through that, my time would be basically getting ready, keeping my speed up, but then strength as well. And then as I got older, it was more of a working on a steady endurance type of training um, from doing Peloton or Peloton before it came out, um, riding bikes, stuff like that, working on endurance. Just, but just having that, that knowledge of making sure that I – Get all my injuries or injuries healed up first and then see where I'm at, see how I feel. Um, and then as you, you know, as you go in age, you just got to listen to your body and know that speed is going to decrease because it's just mother nature. It's just the way it is. And long as you could keep that speed. And I say that that endurance and energy up to play four quarters, you don't have to be physical, but at least one or two times a game as you get older. But when I was younger, I try to use that my, my strength and my running through people ability uh, very number one, a lot of deadlifting, a lot of hand cleans, all that. But then as I got older, I just stayed paid attention to the, what the things I knew I needed to do, you know, get a first down. Wasn't thinking about the big run all the time. Had to be conscious of that because you just know Mother Nature eventually takes over. What did you think about your body composition from year one to year six? Did it change? Did you say the same? Um, Year one, yes, it did. I say – I say it became a little bit thicker, a little bit more thicker um, yeah. once I when I was you know, up creeping top, up, you know. yeah, up top, keep, creeping to 30, 30 years old, um, and and just I and so I paid attention to that. So I was obviously changing things in my diet, mm-hmm. changing things in my conditioning, you know, doing a little bit more long uh, endurance speed training to get used to that to make sure I didn't lose that that I say more than endurance because 
if any at the end of the day you wanted to be in the game i wanted to be in the game for four quarters and be and be ready to go for four quarters because i saw you know in my early years before i hit 30 those when i got up to my i say to put my prime into you know three i was i was at a high level in terms of weight i was like 218 but knowing that my off season i did this so i made sure i try to copycat that same off season try to keep my body weight at the same weight um it was it fluctuate between about 218 and 221 or 222 I was funny. I, I have a uh, one of the guys I work with. We were talking to him about. I was talking to him about finishing because, especially with offensive linemen now, you kind of get paid for pass pro, but you get mm-hmm. famous for run blocking. You know mm. what I mean? You get, you get paid yeah. because your numbers are good in pass pro, but really, if you want to get like notoriety, if you want to get famous, you got to you got to run block. You got to knock people on their on the backside. And yeah. I was, we were talking about it, and, and he said something to me that I because we worked so our group worked so hard, and we would you know we'd chase you down the the screens game. And yeah. We were always yeah. forty yards Work. downfield, always working. We just practiced really hard. It was just part of the way we practiced back then. But he said, guy said to me, he said, you know, being able to finish isn't a tough guy thing as much as it's a conditioning thing. He goes, most most guys are most guys in this league feel like they're tough guys, you know, in the first five minutes of the game. He goes, but after that, most guys are usually kind of not hanging on, but they're 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 limiting themselves or they they have a throttle engaged so so that they don't um or a governor on their throttle so yeah. they don't burn out. Right. And if you don't if you don't have that concern, like to your point, of being able to go into the fourth quarter and just keep playing at the same pace, it doesn't matter if you're running a I guess in your in your case, if you're running a four three or four four, who cares if if in the fourth quarter you can run a four four the whole time? It's like yeah, life's a little bit different for everybody else, isn't it? Exactly. It's just about outrunning that person, you know, and that from the endurance side of it. And that's why I saw guys before my time, Jerry Rice, you know, he was a guy that he consistently Legendary. did endure, yeah, hill, uh, hill and mountain running training. You know where it was elevation, elevation, and cre- creating that that's long, strong endurance rate. And that's what To took from him. He did that. He started. You saw him doing a lot of long wind sprints. You know, jogging around the city where he lived or wherever he trained in the summer when it was hot, right before training camp. And that was the same thing I wanted to simulate because that was the type of I say body type and that training you want to get incorporated. That's what AJ has to think about for himself. You know, obviously he's a big guy. So, mm-hmm. you know, knowing that he's got to look at for one, his strength, because that is right now his weapon. Um, he could and he could use that for, if he stays fresh and doesn't get a whole lot of big injuries, which he hasn't. Just some maybe I say more thigh bruises than anything, but t- that's easy uh, treatment and easy maintenance there. So right now, use that strength as an advantage. But then in the meantime, start working on that. That's endurance speed too. making sure he's conditioning to where he can out. He could stay on that field a lot longer. And then his just, you know, one or two, three times that he comes out on that football field. Okay, okay. so this is interesting, though, because Aaron Jones is still on the team and they are going to split time. And Aaron Jones is a higher yards per carry. And he's probably, mm-hmm. you know, at least early in the season, he seems to get more carries. I know it sometimes later in the season when it gets cold outside, they want to put AJ in more. And so you wonder if you wonder if he's got to prepare. I mean, I suppose you have to prepare to take every snap, but the reality is like you're not going to take every snap. So right. do you if, let's say AJ weighs, I don't know what he weighs, let's say he weighs 250. Correct. Do you yeah. do you pare down to 246 so that you could you you can get an extra two, three series in? Or do you stay do you stay so you feel like you're your absolute most powerful, even though that might mean you're not as good in the fourth quarter, but you know, assuming you played an entire game. You know, um, there's 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 that he has to think about, but I mean, really, let's be honest. When you're when you're 23 years old, you're built. You're 250 pounds. Yeah. If you if you want to start fast, you just got to be like, I'm gonna I'm gonna train really really hard, and I'm gonna do everything I can from like a pregame ritual to the way yeah. I start practice every day to my demeanor getting in, getting dressed every day. Everything's got to get a little more dialed in so that when I hit the field for that first time, I want to make a statement. That's what you always talked about. For you and you, and that's what I always wanted to do is I always wanted to be the first person to punch somebody in the mouth. Yep. And I know you felt the same way. And, and it was almost like we want to get that first hit in immediately so that everybody else is, oh man, we're in a game, we're in a dogfight. Exactly. You want to set the tone. But that four to five pound fluctuation, it from a strength point of view, he's not gonna lose much strength. So if he right. did slim down, you know, to two forty six or two forty five, that he's gonna gain that back in the wintertime. Because no matter what I did between 01 and 04 or 05 i still gained that four pounds in the winter time in wisconsin it was just my my winter fat that's what i called it my winter fat it It came naturally man i was doing i hadn't changed nothing 
I was eating the same, you know, water intake was the same. More my alignment sleeping, for you. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it, it might have been that, but still, we were doing that all season too. So I always fluctuate. I knew I'll be between 218 and 222. That was my weight from those years. And that's where he has to find his number um, and take notes, you know, take a, get a notebook and actually chart, okay, two, uh, 2022 uh, or 2021, I was this weight for the season. This is a week over week, same thing. And that's something. I say a lot of good running backs. I know of uh, talking to Edgerton James, talking to Fred Taylor. I remember Edgerton James like, hey, man, I got a notebook. I, I mm -hmm. keep my tabs on my weight and my speed and my like per carry, just little stuff. But more, he said, more importantly, the weight, because then I knew I was working out. I was staying at the same weight. That means I could come out in that field regardless of there's no now, no anxiety of, man, I'm out of shape. I'm at the same weight, you know that I was the previous years that I rushed for 1800 or I rushed for 1500 and I feel the same too. I could run five, six plays before I'm tired. You know, when you could do that, you could, as a running back, when you tell yourself, when you see that coming out of you, then you, you know where you're supposed to be for the year. Yeah. I, I, uh, it's, it's funny. You probably do, you probably should do it with weight. Um, and, and we did, you know, we had to do weigh-ins and everything, yep. but you, you can be a little more precise than that. I, I always did it honestly by, I was always trying to gain 3% during the season. I want to get 3% stronger during the season. Yeah. So, yeah. so I would just, I would strength. just have, you'd have your, your, your walk-in day, day one, what you would be like, you go through training camp, but then you just start modeling all the kind of the, the core lifts. Mm -hmm. Like, man, I gotta be, I gotta be hitting this many reps for this amount of weight on these days. Oh, 100%, if I can yes. do it, it's like, I didn't care about the weight anymore. Cause I knew like I was getting, I was getting stronger while I was playing full speed. Yeah. And so, it just depends on what kind of mentality you have. Like if you're a guy that has a hard time getting through practice, which a lot of guys do, like it's just part, it's not fun, right? Like it, yeah. it was fun for us. Yeah, but it's, it's, not yeah, always, we, it's not always fun. Like people don't and always enjoy it, you know? They do the it because they have to do it. Yeah. The only part I didn't like was waking up. That was it. <laughs> Once I woke up, I was okay. But I was like waking up was like, is this Tuesday or Wednesday? Oh. This sucks. But once I got up, I got some water in my face that I got in the car to drive over to the facility. I was like, all right, here we go. Put that behind me now. Let's get it. <laughs> once, once you kind of figure out that routine, I think yeah. it's easy for a guy like a guy like AJ to just there's it's it's like you're talking about maybe your weight or talking about your mentality. It's like there's gotta be mm -hmm. one thing that you're doing that's just kind of a little bit you. Right. Yep. A little bit. It's not for everybody else. It's just for you. Maybe it's writing it down in a notebook. Maybe it's, you know, just yeah, that was EJ's it's, way. It's, yep. it's it's maybe whatever it is. It's like gotta be something that's a little bit for you. And you're trying to associate that thing with how you're going to, how it's going to help you perform and start believing in that. Right. Like a lot of this yep. stuff is, it's not placebo, but it's like, if you believe in it, man, it works. You know, yeah. if, if you believe what you're doing is important, that matters. It's one of the tenets of mental toughness. So, 100%. 100%. Um, I'm, I'm going to skip and then come back to another topic we had. So, because this kind of goes into it, JJ Watt said something. Right. Because yeah. he's got two, he's got two brothers that are still in the league. And, you know, like JJ Watt was, people don't give him credit yeah, uh, because Aaron Donald just kind of came out of nowhere. And then JJ got hurt. And then Aaron Donald showed up and was like, oh my God, Aaron Donald. JJ Watt was unblockable for like yeah, he was a four or five years straight. Nobody could block him. Mm -hmm. He was an absolute. I mean, I remember watching Hard Knocks when they were with the Texans, and like they had to take JJ out of every drill because he would just destroy. He's just like, all right, get JJ out of there. Get Bill O'Brien to be over there pissed <laughs> off. Like, can't run on goal line. JJ's in. Take him out, you know. And he said something to in an interview, um, and it kind of it, honestly, like I, I'm nowhere near the, the the player, but the mentality was the same. He was talking about because he was a big time lifter and they you know they had their whole off-season program they have like i think they have a barn that, or they've created their own kind of facility mm -hmm. and he's like man there's nothing better than being able to do stuff that other people aren't willing to do and the power you have over other people because of that like i mm -hmm. love that he said but tj his brother he goes what i'm trying to teach him is like you know maybe all of that you know lifting 700 pounds doing all this crazy weight maybe it contributed to my downfall later in my career and yeah. it's it so it's interesting AG is like it might be true but i'm like to me because i always said this i told i tell my wife this anybody want to i go i would rather play eight years at my best whatever my best was yeah i want to play eight years of my best versus 14 at average i can't live with average like you know what i mean yeah like, and yeah and it's different now i i st we're definitely about the long game now because the money's so big and that's what people think about mm -hmm. but i just like i just wanted to be 
I was going to push myself as hard as I could in the off season during the season and whatever kind of happened, I, you just kind of live with. And that, I know yep. that's not a smart way to do it, but I also don't know that in like JJ Watts um, conversation is JJ Watt a three-time defensive player of the year, surefire hall of fame player. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't push himself past his limits every off season, even yeah. if it means you're not as good, you're not at the top for the last two to three years. Like, is it better? My question, is it better to burn out than to fade away? It, it's, I say that is a, I say that is a question for the ages because athletes, as athletes with the drive that we had, no matter the sport, you know, if I played baseball, I would have been the same thing. I would have been driving myself to be the best outfielder um, training wise. I would have been doing stuff baseball players I know didn't do. I'd be mm -hmm. training like a football player. You know, I trained one year. I went down to Florida and I ended up, I was trying to play baseball myself, but I ended up training all the baseball players there. A lot of, a lot of these kids were from South America and they were, I think the youngest was 15 years old, but he was six, he was six, four and he was a pitcher, you know, but they're in the weight room, just destroying their bodies because they didn't, they're just throwing up weight. They just looking at stuff on YouTube. This was back in 2012, 2013. They're just looking at stuff on YouTube and like, okay, I could do that. And which they were, they were young, they were young and strong. But I end up like having to show them the proper way to do lifting. And I say for baseball players, the bare minimum, if you lift like a football player would do in the early offseason, you will you will play 20, 30 years. You still stay, keep your flexibility. You play a long time in baseball. Is in, in other words, what I was saying. So for the football flip side of it is, you know, it's a, it's a double edged sword because we know that the wear and tear can happen from lifting heavyweights. I remember, you know, seeing you know, doing stuff like I remember, like we were talking about the uh, our number from the last question was my number was if I could go 405 mid season, three to five rep, or four to five reps, I knew I was where I needed to be for that mid season form. Talk that means, girls. yeah, talking about no, talking about squats. I had squats. <laughs> um, it, so you, it's it's just that double edged sword that you kind of gotta have to play. You gotta play with it because you gotta listen to your body when your body speaks to you. You know, you got to say, OK, I got to tell off this a little bit, but I'm going to keep it here just to keep my my shoulder strength here or my leg strength here because it start your body starts to ache. And that's just natural. And for JJ and that that is is a true to life statement. I think for one, like you already mentioned, you you answered what I would answer. Hey, I'm going to go hard. If I go five years, I'm going to go hard in paint. If it was 15, 20, you know, I was able to go 12 as mm -hmm. hard as I possibly could. And then my body was like, all right, you know, it's starting to you know, you got to slow down a little bit or whatever. I would rather do that because I don't want to have doubt. I don't want to create no doubt. That's the thing, mind. right? Like you just, that's why regret. I would go there's 100%. A regret, there's a regret thing there that you say, I mean, listen, we got teammates who come back and go, I wish I would have given, I, I had more to give mm -hmm. and I didn't give what I could have. And that's yep. regretful. And, and you don't want anybody to live like that. Nope. And I think what people point to now, it's it's hard, especially like the NBA, LeBron's an easy one to look at. LeBron is literally the best athlete maybe they ever walked this earth. I mean, just genetically gifted. You just yeah. go, oh my I God. Just, I can. But he, but he's and, he's and he's and he's he's playing twenty years, and he's okay. playing at a ridiculous level. But I'm not saying that he's pushing himself as hard as he can. I don't know, but I do know that he puts a million dollars of hard into his body, and yes, money into his money every off season. And so, so he's doing it like that. That's how I said he's doing it that one way where you're doing just enough to keep the longevity going. Yeah, you know and he can do. In other words, a guy like that can do that because of the sport. I, no, well, and because of him, right? I the can't his, do that. Yeah, physically, yeah. yeah. Being See, like, I can't. Like, there's, there's guys, especially in the NFL, it's hard to look at that and go, oh, well, there's, there's, we know a handful of guys that could do that up to a certain point. Correct. Why, but, why receivers? That's a position where guys like Jerry Rice, I was, like I mentioned, you know, To, To Terrell Owens, he did it. You know, they could find, they could have that longevity. Why? Because not only maybe they not be lifting really heavy, they're not getting hit really hard constantly like we took hits and i i i brought it to the game you know being an old lineman it was your job every day um, to be physical up up top and lower and lower body so i just uh it's always an interesting conflict like the, the burnout or fade away thing to me it's always a tough one because I, it's like i told my i told my kids one time because they're like one day my, my kids like dude you're nuts and i go man you have no idea like i yeah. I, I remember i was at the naval academy and we were, I was, I mean, this is sick, but I was so desperate to make it that I would, I wouldn't miss a set. I, I went in and we were doing, we were doing cleans 
and uh, I I literally had whatever weight I had on there, and I hurt my back, and right. my back popped out, and it was it was bad, mm. and I you know, and I went out in the in the hallway, and I'm crying, I have tears in my eyes because yeah. not because it hurts, because I'm so scared to miss something, oh, the rep and, and wow. rep and let people down, and so I literally am throwing myself into the wall to pop it back i go back i go back in and i finish the set and i have to like limp crawl put my hand down to the training room and it's like what's wrong with you and i'm like i i can't i don't know how to do it i don't know how to do it any other way (laughs) you you know but it's, it's yeah it's just nuts but so then we talk about the length of you know you start talking about the length of uh or burn out the fade away and right. we're talking about how these people are playing for so long. And so contracts now. Right. And how much money they're making. And so when you think about a high-level starter in this league and all of the things that come with being an NFL star now or an NBA star or a Major League Baseball star, all the social media, all the followers, the brand mm-hmm. awareness, the yep. off-field the off the off opportunities. If you're a high-level guy, you let's say you – you didn't get drafted to Green Bay, but at that point you're you're a Green Bay Packer. Mm-hmm. You're, I'm a Green Bay Packer. At some point, you get that contract talk, and it comes in. What as a player now do we prioritize, or what should we be prioritizing now, maybe versus then, or just how do, how do we think about that high level guy? Not not some guy you're scraping. I'm talking. You're a starter, bona fide star in yeah. this league playing. So when you're saying prioritize, uh, like. In terms of your focus, well, so oh, as a yeah, player, so, like, so look at this, Ag. So like you, so somebody comes to you and says, "I we want to we want to talk contract." Okay, obviously there's a there's a financial component, there's right. there's a there's a, a system component, there's organization component, coach mm-hmm. component, yeah, marketing component. Now, yep. do are you going to help me get more followers? How's my are, are you helping me? Yeah, pay like brand? today, correct. All this yeah, stuff that we didn't have to deal with. So nope. I what, but. For me, okay, I got it now. Now I got it. I can answer. Gonna be the thing. Go ahead. Yeah. So, like, for me as a player, if I was playing today, it'll be I'll do I'll try to do two sides of this. So I'm like me now, Mm -hmm. my brain just younger. Um, the last I say the first thing the priority is just you know let's get the deal done. Let's uh, have this negotiation. Let's look at my stats and all that. You know, I'm very aware of what I where I'm at. I stand in the league. Um, if you you know, maybe go go back ten years. This is why going into one of our better seasons as an offense, and so that year before I was a Pro Bowler. It's just so putting it in those stats. So the last thing, to be honest, the way I'm you know built and knowing now, the last thing I'm thinking about is social media. You know how many followers I got, um, all that. I'm learning about contract first. That's my you know talking to my agent, talking to um, Gudikus getting on the same page, you know, look, I want to be here for the remainder of my career. This is what I, you know, deserve to be. And I was a guy where I said, look, just give me what I earn. I'm not trying to break the bank. Mm-hmm. Give me what I earn to this point, you know, at this time of my career, what my stats say and where they compare to the other running backs that are at my caliber. Mm-hmm. That's if it's $1 more than, you know, somebody over at the Rams or the Falcons or the Dolphins. Okay. If I my yards are better than him, then do that. But other than that, I'm not crying. I'm telling my agent, look, I'm not trying to, you know, bank bank rob them. Let's get what we I earn and go from there. Make this easy as possible. There was so then four, I could there was a I could get years, the focus. There's a three or four year stint where you and Priest Holmes had the highest yards from scrimmage than mm-hmm. anybody in the league. So you could have at this point asked for whatever you want. So what you're saying is, number one, you have to make the determination that you want to be in Green Bay. Yep. Which I think that's what, like, and I did that. I was like, I yeah. want to be here. So that yeah. was one. So this, whatever was happening here is good for you from a, from yep. a personal standpoint, from a professional standpoint, family, family, everything is, it works. And then Let's the go. second, the second thing then is like, okay, well, I know what I'm worth. I don't, I don't think it's right that you'd ask me to take a, a discount, but Correct. I'm certainly not going to try to Deshaun gonna, Watson the market here right. to prove a point. I'm not going to reset the market on me. Yeah, I think this is where this is where a lot of um, people that are out there busting their ass to make fifty thousand dollars a year sometimes get. We get a problem when you know people are talking about. Oh, I better get that bag, get that bag, and it's like, it's a lot of money, but if yeah. if you got a guy making twenty million dollars a year, and he skips town to make 
20.5 or 21, you're going, there's yeah. got to be, you're hoping there's got to be more to it. There's yeah. got to be something else that he's getting for in return than, um, than, you know, a 5% increase in pay That's not to worth go it. to another team. Because it just doesn't it. make – otherwise, it doesn't make sense, does it? No, it makes zero sense because you are, you're already in a place you're very comfortable with mm-hmm. offensively or defensively, wherever you sit, and that, there's no – no percentage of money can help take away that comfort that you already earned where you're at. Because mm-hmm. now you got to go through that whole process again. Mm-hmm. you got to get acclimated to a new team, a new city. Your family got to find – you got kids, they got to get into school – you know, you got to make sure the wife is, it's all that going on that's behind the scenes. And then, oh, on top of that, you got to be now the free agent, tight end, running back, tackle that get paid all this money. And you got to show up when you're already dealing with the normal stuff off the field that, that every athlete deals with when going into a free agent or a draft or I say trade or anything like that. My, so my seventh year, I'm going into my contract year. I know, mm-hmm. I, I know I'm going to be the way we see the way we You're wrote our Seattle contract. Then, right. right? By no, that no, time? no, no. Sorry. My seventh year I was in green Bay. Oh, so okay. it was my last year in green Bay. And I knew last, that okay. we were going to go free agent. Like I, they, we had the way that we wrote our contract, they had to cut me or I had the, the cap. It was $25 million. It was a ridiculous number, right? right. You so we, we knew we were going, we knew we were going into a, uh, into free agency and I wanted to leave. Mm-hmm. I mean, Quite frankly, like I, I wanted, I didn't want to, I didn't want to play for, you know, the line coach. And I didn't have a good relationship. But you hear some things about what's being said in the media and whatnot. And um, I wanted, the, like, I wanted the challenge. I wanted to go somewhere else. I wanted to go mm-hmm. prove myself. And you know, when you're an, when you're an offensive lineman and you got Amon Green running and you got Brett Favre in the backfield, and it's like sometimes you want to go. Okay, am I good everywhere else too? Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but once you get through with all that stuff the priority for me was i've decided that we're not going to be here Mm -hmm. and i just immediately went where are the like who are the people i hate to play the most i'm going to go play with them (laughs) that was it was really that easy i was like i was like i was like i I hate playing again i mean i love playing against the panthers defense because they're so good Chris Jenkins, Mike Rucker, Julius Peppers, oh, yeah. Dan Morgan, Will Witherspoon, Brentson Buckner, Mike Minter. They were they were yep. so good. The box was so freaking good that it I was, was like, dude, I've never played on a team that had a defense like that. That's where I want to go. Mm. And I didn't care really about anything. Like I had a wish list and they were top of the list. I had two or three other teams that were on there. I got lucky they called. And it just became like I the rest of it just kind of I didn't even ask about the rest of it. Like the money, you, you know, you're, when you go to free agent, I was a high rank guy. Like, you know, you're going to get paid. Yeah. You know, but, but I'm not like, I don't care what everybody else is getting in this and that. Like it doesn't, yeah, that part, exactly. that part doesn't, you know, that's their business. Yeah. That's, that's just do it. You want to be in a situation where you think you can find success. They had just been in a Super Bowl two years before. They have a, mm-hmm. they have a, a strong running game. Uh, Stephen Davis, the Auburn running back was there for, for a couple of years and they just picked up Deshaun Foster. They yep. had Steve Smith. You're just going like, there's some pieces there that make sense. Yep. And you go, you go try to find where you can be successful and find a good fit. But all the other stuff, I've met other guys now, especially when I was down in Miami with guys now, and they've got you know social media teams. They have cameras falling around all the time, and they're all they're, the, yeah. they're, they're, they're worried about is like I got to break, I got to reset this market, and that and it's and it's not a bad thing. It's just interesting to see how different the game is. And yep. then when you when you hear a guy like JJ Watt talking about like I dude, I'm in, I emptied the tank. Yeah, like I I emptied the tank. and I respect that. That's yeah. I got more respect for that. And I say I was thinking about as soon as you said like social media, I'm thinking about your favorite guy, uh, Mr. Russell. <laughs> Russell with, with the way he does his social media. <laughs> that's so that's part. Thing, of, that's what you were talking about. Russ, about though, you know? is Russ, Russ is a Russ comes off as a very hard worker, right? Like right. like you have no problem. Uh, like we have no fundamental problem with how much effort the guy puts into being a good player. It's, it's the, it's kind of the, you know, listen, you like strawberry. I like chocolate. Like I, right. I, I want to be left alone. Maybe you want to be everybody know what you're doing. You know, it's just, yeah. it's just difference of opinion, you know, or difference exactly. of comfort, familiarity. But, <clears throat> but yeah, but certainly like I, I, one thing I would never say about that guy I'd say a lot about him, but one thing I would never say is he's not a hard worker because you know that. Oh, no. He, he's busting it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, he's working. He's working. All right, last yep. one here. I, yep. What do you think? That's a good question. Let's go. So we were, I, I did this show on um, – I did this show with 
uh, for the Packers, Zach Tom and, and Yash Naiman. Mm-hmm. And okay, it's like, <clears throat> who's going to play right tackle? And so I broke down a tape watching the both of them at the same time. Uh, in, in Zach was playing left tackle, but you know, it's transferable. Mm-hmm. And especially in this league now, most of the, a lot of really good defensive ends are playing on the left side now against the right tackle because yep. that's you know Michael Strahan, all those guys starting TJ Watt, they're breaking all the sack records over there now, right? Yep. So Zach Tom has a, in my opinion, from an athletic standpoint. Now I don't know anything about their locker room. I don't know anything mm-hmm. about how they study from a from a finish. From what you see, from what from you an see. athletic standpoint. From a technical standpoint, footwork wise, and from a finish standpoint, I think Zach is going to has the potential to be a, a better player. Okay. At what stage? Because now you've got Jordan Love, new quarterback, you've got mm-hmm. all these new pieces. How much better does Zach Tom have to be from an athletic standpoint in order to unseat a guy who started an entire season and did a good job and got did well enough to get his tender offer with Josh mm-hmm. Nyman? Like, mm-hmm. what's that difference have to be in talent? When you before you actually pull the trigger in the National Football League, it's that talent being confident in their game, mm-hmm. and then that coaching staff seeing that talent, saying, "Hey, uh, we got to put him in <laughs> because every time he's in, he's doing something that pops up off the screen. He's making a difference in the line, or you know, his blocking and all that." That's what happened. That's that's it that. has to be. So that means it's production, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it, no, it is. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, well, it's not production. It's only production because it's about how many when you see when you do your plays, how many plays out of five, ten, pick a number. How many plays out of that 10, 10 plays where plays were successful and like, oh my god, look at he, look what he did. He cleared the path for the runner back. He did this to the tackle. He he assisted here. He picked up the blitz coming okay. backside. That let me type ask of you, stuff. Let me ask you this then, because this is okay. Do you remember Oklahoma State famously had Barry Sanders backing up Thurman Thomas? Yes, I, I knew. Yeah, that's true. Right? That's the truth. Okay, statement. so so and Thurman Thomas <clears throat> is a Thurman Thomas was the, in my opinion, was the second best running back in the National Football League when Barry Sanders was in the game, better than Emmitt Smith for me. For me, yeah. But he was up there. He's a very good player. But it was Barry Sanders. Right. So, so, so there's a situation where you go because you just said he had to clear, he had to make this huge, you know, clear the lane or whatever. Is that more of a is is that a position where it might be like, well, wait a second, dude, like this kid is doing stuff that the other one just can't do. I would say first thing is I like I have I'm glad I have this problem. Yeah. As a running yeah, back coach, right, I'm right. glad at first, or if I'm an line coach, I'm glad I have this problem because now these players are competing. They're doing things now that I had never seen all linemen do because they're trying to fight out who's going to be the starter. So I'm like, I want this problem. And so to your point, like having Barry Sanders in the backup, the good thing is, look, I, where Thurman was a senior, maybe. Or yeah, upper class. So, yeah, it's left. like, OK, yeah. you know, you could play the game. OK, I got him for one more year. And then next year, Barry, this is your team, mm-hmm. you know, and that's where, you know, even though. The years are not as different as it was with or now with Yashman and Tom is they're actually a little bit closer, you know, and Yashman just got that big deal. So it's still it's still going to be a fact of that. That line coach is going to have to once they see enough, it's going to be a time where they have to pull the trigger and be like, all right, I know we pay Yash this money. If it becomes to that, if not, it'd be like, all right, then we stay stick with Yash because he's done this. So it it will be it'll be that t- determining factor is looking for that and paying attention to that as a coaching staff. I would, as a I coach. would yeah. I mean, you're, I, there's no right answer. I just, I, when I was watching it, I just went, you know, th- the ceiling is clearly higher, but he's never had a full off season in the national football league. Is he going to yeah. be better? Is he going to be bigger? Yash well, looks see. the part right now. He's, he's six, seven, he's 315 pounds. He's very, yeah. very well. But I remember John Runyon Jr. saying the kid looks like a damn freak of nature, you know? So <laughs> he, he's well built. He's got good feet. It's not like he's a bad player. Yeah. It's just, the way that Zach Tom tries to finish, the way that he rolls his hips through, it's it's we don't have other players on the line that can do that. Mm-hmm. And he can't sustain because he's not strong enough yet. But if he gets there, it's like you can get there. It's like, do you sit the guy in the, you know, it's like the quarterback question. You got a real talent, you sit him on the bench or do you throw him in the fire? Do you sit him on the bench and let him get prepared, or do you throw him in the fire? I mean, the, I guess 
it's interesting that it could pertain to some other. I don't think that pertains to running back. I think you have a good running back. You just put him in because yeah. it's like, all right, I mean, can you maybe you don't put him in on blitz pickup, but otherwise you're going to find a way to give him the damn ball. If, yeah, if you he can play, but you can't do that at quarterback position. You have to make that decision. Offensive line, there's maybe some other positions that you have to make a different decision than like wide receiver. If a wide receiver can run fast, like, hey, Corey Bradford. Yeah, bro. I don't know if the bro knew another route. He just ran nines. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I remember. I, mean, I love Corey, but like, it'd be like, yeah. all right, Corey's in the game. I guess we're going deep. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's either like running off or, or going for it. Yeah, like I said, it's just up to that that coach doing his due diligence, watching the gameplay of those players or whoever the player is, to then eventually say, is he worth making the change? Is he doing what I'm seeing or what? We've seen other amazing offensive linemen do at that position. All right, we got to at least try it out. Maybe, you know, you got a lot of time. So you got these OTAs and you got training camp, you know, and then, uh, you know, you know how training camp goes. First couple of weeks, guys get hurt, not not putting in on anything, but that's just part of the game. It happens. So with that, just making sure that guy, be it Tom, be it Yash, are ready to go. Um, and like I said, it's a good problem to have when you have inventory of solid, really good players that are technically sound. With not a lot of, with basically because of their of their talent. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do. That'll be, uh, but hopefully, hopefully that's a good training camp battle that we can talk about 100%. later on. But for now, All let's right, do a little get off my lawn because something came up. Uh, we talked about this before. I, I just this whole game in media, bro, is like, hey, it's like it's almost like we start we start with, hey. Uh. This, you say something really stupid, and then right. I'm gonna I'm gonna debate how dumb it was. And so this guy is Bleacher Report guy. He puts together this like imaginary trade, and I don't know what's going on. So like I, you know I, I click on the internet and I, I type in package, see what's going on, and it's like potential trade Josh Nyman for uh, I don't even remember I don't I don't remember, maybe for, to the Raiders for Devontae Adams or something. And I, and I, go, <laughs> I go right, whatever, right? Go, what? And it's like, oh yeah, and it's like it turns out this is an imaginary trade from some guy over. You know, there's no background, no validity whatsoever. And you're just like, this thing was the top four clicks when you typed in Packers, and I just go, you've got to be. Kidding. You know why though, right? Well, like, yeah, but like, yeah. I, I, and I read, agree with you. We should I agree read with the you. newspaper for. I mean, you know, maybe we need a, a break from. <laughs> Sports and so, I, to your point, a hundred percent agree. Um, news outlets, bloggers, even the big ones, the big boys, ESPN, NFL Network, they are so inept in creating their narrative, so they can have their talking heads go in on it. Like this morning, I turn on TV while I'm working out, so I can have it in the background, mm -hmm. and I end up muting it because it was just annoying how much they were narrating the line between. Uh, Miami and um, the Celtics and what's going on in that series and why the Celtics are not playing rare, you know, good against the heat and all this. They're creating, I'm just like, they're basically trying to get that. I mean, by the end of the day, this coach is going to get fired because of what's been talking about on ESPN basketball. So it's just like, why is, why, why are they so hard at creating this narrative that has nothing to do with what any of the players said, what's going on in the court. And it's like, hmm. I'm, I'm so like, glad wow. you brought that up, bro. Because, I'm like, wow. AG, let's 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 have this talk right now. Yeah. If a, if you have two All NBA players, but call it NFL, call it whatever you want. Yeah, any sport. Any sport. Is what is these? I they say Joe Mazzulla needs to get fired because right. those two didn't play well, and they lost the team. Yeah, I'm like we had, and I, and I go, I go. uh well, he can get fired. I'm not saying he maybe he didn't make some. I don't know enough about basketball. Maybe some right. We, yeah. We, we don't, don't know what's going on in that city. Like, right. Oh, we didn't We're not there. the screen well enough. Oh, sorry. You know, whatever. <laughs> but when you say, when you start saying at the profession, this isn't high school, bro. No. This isn't college. Yeah. When, when you got guys going on ESPN, Kendrick Perkins, Perkins is a damn NBA championship. He goes on ESPN. And I know he's got a story he's got to tell. Yeah. But when you start saying stuff like you lost the team, guys aren't playing for you. I just don't know on what planet I the no. disdain that I had for our line coach is I mean immeasurable. Oh yeah. But to but to suggest that he had anything to do with my effort 
or wanting to win. It's like, oh, yeah. what are you talking? That's not how this works. We're pros. I, 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 yeah. I you had a couple coaches. Home, bro. Right. I had a couple coaches I did not like. Yeah. But that had nothing to do with what I was going to do on that practice field or the game field. Right. It was a separation of, okay, yeah, I'm, you know, we're not best friends. And this is not about being besties, being a coach to player relationship. No. Just as long as you, you know, teach me what I need to know. All right. But even then, if you don't, I'm going to figure it out on my own or I'm going to ask another player. But my gameplay is not going to be a fan. Like, that's the last thing it, I'm going to worry about it, walking on the field. It, okay. All right. So this has got to be the question then. Because yeah. you and I, that is the dumbest statement that we could yeah. possibly That's why hear. I put it on mute. I put it on mute. I was like, this is ridiculous. Do you think it's because they have guaranteed contracts? I would say real easy, yes. Yes. And the NBA has it where, you know, the players speak freely, you know, they say a lot more than we do not. And we and actually NFL players are saying a lot more than our time. When we're at our time, mostly we, you know, wasn't as much of talking back or replying, whatever, as players. But now it's different in NFL. It's come a long way. But NBA quarterback position. Yes, particularly, particularly there. Um, So but for NBA, they've been doing this forever. I mean, you go back to the 70s, 80s, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Michael. Uh, Magic Johnson, they spoke their mind. Uh, uh, Larry Bird, you know, they spoke their mind, and well, they've been think, doing it since I, then. I, as I recall, I, I think I want to say Magic. I think they got somebody. Magic got somebody fired his second year. And oh, fired. when uh, <laughs> probably yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, mean, because yeah. they were they were even co- quoting Magic because Magic being Magic and saying, "Hey, remember back in the eighties, da 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 da," and he said they look like they quit. So they're using that one little quote that he put on Twitter to then potentially get this Boston Celtic coach. I'm like, come on, y'all. The series ain't over. Okay, it might be, but I'm just saying, as a player mindset, it's like it's not over till it's over, you know. But they're just grabbing stuff. It's just amazing. They're grabbing stuff, and it's the middle of the offseason. Football is pretty much yeah. taking a nap right now because we're everybody's in OTAs, and you know, all the big contracts are completed. Now they're just trying to define something of an offseason left. Because another two months, then they'll be able to get back to, you know, talking about football every day, all day. So I think that that's that's where uh, the media is at right now. All the heavy hitters. It is interesting on the on the flip side of that with the with the NBA, at least. And, and, and maybe the quarterbacks and some other guys that are getting high price contracts now um, as a player. You know, it's a really it's a really interesting, AG, because like as a player, you go, uh, I want the players to have as much say as they possibly can. But on the other hand. That is probably like that statement's probably in a vacuum, you know, because the mm-hmm. truth is the player's job is to play well. It's not to it's not to pick the other players, it's not to go pick their buddies. Uh, I, yeah. this, and this right. is like this is kind of somewhat controversial, especially at the NFL level when you got 53 people on the roster. Yeah. Um, there might be some guys you have a good rapport with that you want, you know, I mean, certainly on the on the basketball court or the soccer field, there's be some guys you have a good rapport with that you want to you want to work. There's some guys that hey, obviously like everybody wants in a mono green in the running in the running back room, but it's mm-hmm. not like it's not like the, you know the quarterback's going like, oh, we got to get a mono green, and the coach is like, no, 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 you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> it's not that situation. Right. But it is interesting because you want the players to have as much say as possible, but it it old school of me i guess it does feel odd as much as i champion a lot of it when a a player can have the influence of getting a coach fired like it does it feels odd to me and that's probably because i play offensive line it feels super odd too yeah Yeah. offensive line running back like any respect respected positions but you know a quarterback at this you know quarterbacks get coaches fired for bad play yeah and listen we know that they're involved in hiring discussions. So you just, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a really weird, I don't know if that's a place where I really want to go with, with, with sports, you know, no. at, at this stage. And maybe they, I'm sure it just has, that's how it is in the NBA, but with football, I don't know if I really want to go that route. Yeah. Cause the players, I mean, we, we were talking about a guy that we, as a basketball goat, well, I'm going to say it because he's, he is Michael Jordan. We're, we we brought his name up earlier and, even though, remember, when he became an owner, mm-hmm. it was different. You know, remember when he played, he had the little butting heads with the GM of the Bulls with some of his, yep, with some of his negotiation. And that's why he, towards the end of his contract, I think the last three years of his career, they were all one-year deals. Mm-hmm. And it was because of that, dis, you know, kind of like that static. Now he retires, actually comes back, play, plays as a wizard. Then 
by you know he already owns the Wizards. He's a, then becomes GM owner or owner, and he's now in that space as an owner. You know, as somebody that can't really influence the court. He going to only way he influences the court is here's the money. You got to draft the players. You know, to the GM and the head coach. But he obviously he tried to butt in on some of the players. I remember when uh, was it what Kwame was it Kwame Richardson? Kwame, Kwame Brown. Brown, when they first drafted him, I remember seeing a video where he was getting literally told the to riot act by Michael Jordan every day, every day. And he kind of that kind of like shattered him, you know, because he was only 18. And you got Michael Jordan basically berating you every day instead of finding that connection first and then go down that line and be right there. So he never established that connection with Kwame. And so Kwame, like, kind of. You know, he sh- he he defended himself. He kind of like went the other way only because of defense. He took personal to the attacks instead of taking it as I'm trying to make you better, which uh, that's old school for us. You know, people get Michael, in our face. Michael beat. Jordan's a borderline sociopath when it comes. Yeah, to he, <laughs> well, I mean, he's a winner. He, you know, he's yeah. one of the guys we've seen it, you know, and I, it wasn't to a fault to like belittle him. To, it's just trying to make him better as a player. But Kwame didn't know that, you know, and that's something he had to learn. Michael Jordan had to learn that on the ownership side as a little different territory to try to get a player to find, find their potential. I say player got to find their own potential in my book. I say, no, there's no stretch of a matter of a coach, what you can do and say to that, unless that player flips that switch on their own, then you'll have their full attention. You know, Michael Jordan has two things that he's done that I make him the undisputed champion of the world. Right. One is one is he had in his contract for love of the game clause, which yeah, I love that. I didn't even when I heard that, I didn't know he put yeah. that in there. He, himself. Played, he could play basketball for those who don't know. It just meant yeah. he could play basketball anywhere, anytime, anywhere, for anytime any, for any, for any yep. reason. There's nobody and they couldn't they couldn't take away his money if he got hurt, which was just absolutely was genius. Phenomenal. Genius. And the second thing he did, it was more recent. Uh, somebody asked like a, a person, a reporter, something said, hey, do you think the Chicago Bulls, your, your Chicago Bulls team could beat the, the LeBron's Lakers? They played each other. And he goes, "Yeah, of course." And he goes, "Well, how many did you win by?" He goes, "Like oh, probably like three or four points." He goes, "Why so little?" He goes, "He goes, we're all sixty years old now." Well, ah, so, I, I love it. Like, I was like, "You are the absolute." Yes. I don't know if he's know, been and, sitting and on that. I could but, tell where you were going with it too, because yeah. I was like, he's talking about current, like guys still alive, living, yeah. but in their six, almost mid fifties, early sixties. <laughs> Dude, it's unbelievable, man. Oh, oh man. Hey, oh. Gee, tell me they can find you, bud. Oh man, find me on Instagram and Twitter at Amon Green 30, all one word, and then Amon Green's Gamers Lounge on TikTok and YouTube talking about some fun gaming stuff here, man. So what's up? What's new in the gaming world? We got a what's new game new? coming out. Oh man, new games. Yeah, Jedi or uh, Jedi Survivor just hit. And Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. That is the big two big games. And then even though what Harry about, Potter What about Diablo 4? Dude, I just Diablo 4, yep. That, that came out about a month ago. It looks scary. It's fun. It's on Xbox too. It's not just on PC anymore. It's on okay. both. Yep. So those I are saw that. That was out. actually a commercial in a movie I just saw. It was it was it looks creepy. It, yeah, it looks messed up. Extreme. It's Diablo, it's the devil. So <laughs> oh yeah, they have some fun with uh with those games. But uh and then a game that came out earlier this year that's like sold more copies and they breaking records, which is no surprise. It's Harry Potter Hogwarts game that's on console, Xbox and PlayStation. I'm like, yeah, it, it the books done sold a trillion dillion dollars, a kazillion, I don't know. And now the video game is doing the same thing. So it was like no surprise. I love I love that like when Tony Hawk came out with they came out with Tony Hawk Street yeah. Escape whatever it was called it was such a fun yeah, game. pro skater to, Tony Hawk pro skater, skater. I used yeah. to love I used to love playing it was my favorite game to play it's, they they, then, they refurbished it they brought part they, two back out again oh, over and over and over yeah. and then they're like they're asking Tony Hawk they're like did you when did you know it was going to be good and he's like he said something somebody to the effect of like the Activision guy took him out to lunch and and uh, they said, yeah, we're going to come out with season four and it's going to do in Ruan. And he's like, what do you mean? Well, and he like slid him a check for like four million. He's like, yeah, really. He's like, really well. These will be coming every year. It's like, all right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Thank you. More, yeah. More for the group. Appreciate it. Mike, where they can find, let everybody know where they can find yeah. you. Yeah, man. Mike Wall 68 on uh, Twitter and TikTok. Process to perform on Instagram. AG, fun as always. Yes, it is. We'll catch you uh, next week. Until then, enjoy everybody. Uh, enjoy the rest of the week. We'll see you soon. And you too as well, Mike. Peace.